I'm going to read you uh, a story. This is a story that actually happened, but the names have been changed to protect the innocent, exactly. Tom and Cindy have been married only a few years and are hosting 15 people for Thanksgiving at their house this year. Cindy has had a difficult relationship with Tom's mother, who never liked Cindy and never warmed up to her. But she's hoping that this holiday will be special and that her mother-in-law will see she's a good wife to Tom. She's been preparing for the last several weeks, cooking and cleaning, making her special stuffing that she knows will be a big hit this year. Her in-laws arrived and Cindy explained to her mother-in-law that she's had some, she has some single friends who are with the homeless ministry at the church and they can't come until five in the afternoon Thanksgiving day. But our family always eats it too, said her mother-in-law. Cindy said, Tom said it was okay to change the family tradition this year. We can eat at five. It's only a few hours later. I think you're making a big mistake, said her mother-in-law as she rolled her eyes. We have plenty of snacks and hors d'oeuvres, so no one will go hungry said Cindy, feeling that she had settled the issue. The turkey needed four hours to cook, so Cindy had planned to put the bird in the oven at one to be ready at five. On Thanksgiving morning, they all had a nice breakfast and left for the 10 o'clock Thanksgiving service at the church. Tom's parents drove in a separate car and arrived 10 minutes after everyone else for some reason. But they all sat in the same row at church and sang hymns of praise and thanksgiving together. Cindy was so happy. This was going to be a perfect Thanksgiving. They arrived home at noon as one big happy family. Tom walked in and remarked, Mmm, smells great. I love the smell of turkey in the oven. Cindy said, but I didn't put the turkey in the oven. I was waiting until 1 p.m. Tom immediately sensed something was wrong. Cindy's blood pressure was going up, so he went and turned on the football game. Cindy looked at the clock. It was 12 noon. She looked at the oven timer. There were two hours to go. It was going to be ready at two. She looked in the refrigerator and she saw her homemade stuffing sitting all alone on the shelf. Cindy put it all together. She had been duped, tricked, usurped, betrayed. After they left the house, Tom's mother said she'd forgotten something and needed to go back. They went around the block and returned to the house after everyone had gone to church. Like the Grinch who stole Christmas, her mother-in-law went back inside, turned on the oven, slipped the turkey in so it would be ready at 2 o'clock when she wanted then she and her husband got back in the car, went to church, arriving 10 minutes after everyone else, and joined in singing songs of praise and thanksgiving as one big happy family. Cindy could feel her blood boiling as she went to find her mother-in-law, who was outside smoking a cigarette. Did you put the turkey in the oven? asked Cindy as calmly as she could. Happy Thanksgiving to you too, said her mother-in-law with a smirk. What happened to all that love and peace and joy you were just singing about? I thought you were a Christian. 
Aren't you supposed to honor your father and mother? You are not my mother, said Cindy. Well, I'm Tom's mother, said her mother-in-law. And doesn't it say in the Bible, the two shall become one? She said, arguing like an attorney who had never lost a case. Did you put the turkey in the oven? She asked again, more respectfully. Well, someone had to salvage the holiday because you were ruining it, said her mother-in-law as she blew her smoke. We discussed this, and you agreed. I have friends coming at five, said Cindy. My dear, let me teach you something about men, she said. They need to eat. I cleared it with Tom. He was, he was fine eating at five. Of course, that's what he would tell you, she said, condescendingly. But I know Tom. I'm his mother. And he wants to eat it too, just like my husband and all the other men in your house. They work hard, and you're cruel to make them wait. All the men in the house agreed to eat at five, said Cindy, now feeling a little guilty. You should thank me for saving your marriage, said her mother-in-law. Saving my marriage? What are you talking about? Her mother-in-law shook her head and clicked her tongue as if she was talking to a child. You are putting your single friends before your husband. Oh dear, you're not single anymore. But you will be soon if you keep this up. My Tommy will find someone who makes him a priority. We we have a good marriage, said Cindy defensively. Of course you do, dear. That's why Tom has been looking so thin lately. He's losing weight. Your cooking obviously doesn't agree with him. Tom has been going to the gym after work. Cindy said, that's why he's thinner. Of course, my dear, that's what he would tell you. Her mother-in-law had a mischievous smile, sowing doubts in Cindy's mind about her marriage. Do remind me to send you some recipes after I get home, said her mother-in-law. I think you need some help in that area. She took a long drag on her cigarette as the smoke was coming out of Cindy's ears. You left the oven on for two hours and no one was home. You could have burned the house down. My dear, don't be silly. Turkeys don't burn houses down. Cindy was shaking and she could feel a migraine coming on although she never had a migraine in her life. She knew this was what it felt like. She turned around and went straight to Tom, who couldn't see the veins popping out in her neck because he was watching the football game. His team had just taken possession after a fumble. He was holding a plate of chips and salsa, and he tried to wave her off with one of the chips. When he felt her fingernails digging into his forearm. She said, now, and he realized he had to set down his chips and go with her into the other room. Tom, you need to control your mother, said Cindy. I can't control my mother. Nobody can, said Tom. She tricked me. They went around the block and came back here after we left. She put the turkey in the oven and left the house. The oven was on for two hours and no one was home. Well, look on the bright side, said Tom. The house didn't burn down. He thought he could use simple logic to calm her and quickly make the peace. He was wrong. We were supposed to eat at five. I have friends coming at five, said Cindy. Look, 
We can eat at two. We can eat at five. We've got chips. We've got salsa. We've got guacamole. It doesn't really matter to us. But the turkey sure smells good right now, said Tom, hinting they should eat it too. She didn't even put in my special stuffing, said Cindy. I spent hours making that stuffing. Well, uh, can you put it in now? Said Tom, not understanding that his wife wasn't asking for culinary advice. No, I won't be putting my stuffing in now. Tom, always a problem solver, thinks he has a brilliant idea. I saw an ad on TV for stovetop stuffing. Can't you put it in a pan on the stove and just warm it up? I did not buy stovetop stuffing. I made homemade stuffing, said Cindy. Your mother has ruined everything. Tom finally realizes his cooking tips and insights are not helping because Cindy starts to cry and runs upstairs and slams the door. She is wide-eyed, nostrils flared, rapid, shallow breathing, Hearts pounding. She's as angry as she has ever been. She is sorry she married Tom, that spineless wimp who won't stand up to his mother. She's also sorry that when she married him, she made him get rid of all the handguns because she could use one right now. <laughs> Tom hears the door slam upstairs and senses there's some tension. He doesn't really understand why Cindy is so upset about eating a few hours earlier, especially since it makes his mother happy. He doesn't want to get between them, really anything to keep the peace. Can't we all just get along? With all the tension, Tom feels like he needs some beer with his chips, and so he says, does anyone want beer? All the men nod, and so Tom leaves to go get some beer. Sally, the 19-year-old niece, is a first-year seminary student. You see her pick up a Bible and start to head for the stairs. You intercept her. Sally, what's your plan? I'm going to tell Cindy two things every Christian should know, she says with that seminary smile. All things work together for good to them who love God. You shake your head. Anything else? Yes, Jesus says we should love our enemies. You cringe. You recognize that Sally has good intentions. But the truth of her words... are outweighed by the fact that she has not lived long enough to understand that when speaking words of truth to people in distress, there is something called timing. A saying of Jesus comes to mind about the experts in the law loading people with burdens that they are unable to bear and not lifting a finger to help them. You say to her, Sally, I... I appreciate your desire to help Cindy, but I don't think Cindy will be able to hear you right now. You put your arm on her shoulder and guide her carefully back into the kitchen with the other women. I think she needs something else first, perhaps some from someone a little older. And you think to yourself, and I just saved your life. Cindy is angry, and to make it worse, nobody understands her. She wants a blueberry muffin or a big piece of pie or some chocolate. She sees this as a devaluation of her personally. She feels like she doesn't matter. Her preparations don't matter. She has spent weeks preparing and cleaning and shopping. She's exhausted physically, emotionally, and spiritually. 
her mother-in-law has made a move that can't be reversed. She has been tricked. Nobody, including her husband, seems to understand how she feels. The turkey is going to be ready in two hours. Cindy has a few options. She can stay in the bedroom and boycott Thanksgiving. Or she can try to get control of herself, maybe from help, with some help from one of you, one of her guests, to figure out what she needs to do and what she needs to know in order to be able to come out in the next two hours. The holiday has been hijacked. The good news is that you are one of the relatives in the house today. Can you salvage Thanksgiving Day? Well, I want to spend a minute now to have you discuss that. If any of you felt tension during that story, I can tell you that most people do that they can think of people that this reminds them of, people perhaps in their own families. What are the things that Cindy needs to know? What does she need right now? Perhaps what would we consider wise counsel? You can think of some biblical principles that you might know. You could think of the story of Job, whose friend's counsel didn't go so well. Are there any other sources that you might draw upon? I'm just going to give you a minute right now uh, to talk among yourselves. Just what's coming to mind for you? What are you going to need to know and what are you going to do when you go up the stairs and enter that bedroom? So the things that we're going to want to... There are a couple things we're going to need to know. First, we need an idea of what Cindy is thinking or feeling. There's something that Cindy needs is some empathy. She can't seem to get any empathy. Her mother-in-law gave her how much empathy? Zero. Zero. Not even a tiny little admission of any type of guilt, no repentance, it would be helpful if you were aware of the certain types of people, there are personality types, that have very low empathy. People who, when you try to give them basically uh, some correction, what happens? It comes right back at you. They can't receive what we would call a healthy shame message. Now, there are some discrepancies in the field regarding shame. Some people will say shame is always bad. I don't believe that. Uh, our culture wants to tell us that shame is always bad, so nobody should have any shame for anything, no matter what they do, no matter how long they do it. Uh, it that shame is just bad. I believe there's something called healthy shame and toxic shame. And what we need to do is become very wise about that. And so what I'm going to do is read the dialogue between Cindy and her mother-in-law. And we can look at what I would consider healthy shame, which Cindy is presenting, and the toxic shame that her mother-in-law is presenting, which ultimately ends up wearing Cindy down so that she feels so low about herself, all she can do is escape to the bedroom and basically she's a mess. She's on a shame spiral. She can't pull out of this. She's going to need some help from you. This is a healthy shame message. Basically, Cindy is saying, did you put the turkey in the oven? Healthy shame message. The mother-in-law has done something. What is the mother-in-law's response? What happy Thanksgiving to you too. What happened to all that love and peace and joy you were just singing about? Aren't you a Christian? Aren't you supposed to honor your father and mother? You see this 
automatically it's coming right back at her, automatically on the attack. Where, 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 where is this coming from? Cindy asks again, again, did you put the turkey in the oven? As respectfully, she's trying to get this woman to respond if she uses a very respectful tone. Did you put the turkey in the oven? Well, someone had to salvage this holiday because you were ruining it, says her mother-in-law, with rolling her eyes, a sign of contempt, devaluation. You see all of these messages. Some are verbal, some are nonverbal. But she's dealing with a woman who is not receiving any shame message, not even a healthy one, not even one that says, I want to be in a healthy relationship with you, but I need some help here. It's, this is not a one-sided relationship. But there are people in our families, I will call them emotionally immature. You can call them narcissistic. You can call them toxic. You can call them abusive. They are emotionally immature. They don't know what a healthy relationship is. There's only one kind of relationship where they make the rules. And we're seeing that. She's, she, they are brilliant at arguing. Everything Cindy says, she just twists it around like an attorney. It, it's, you, you can't win. You think, oh, surely the logic would work. Or if I just, and you go home thinking, if I just would have said this. We discussed this. You agreed. I have friends coming at five, said Cindy. Let me teach you something about men, says her mother-in-law. They need to eat. Right? This is all because the men need to eat. You notice how that shell game works. It's not her. It's not that she's usurping this control. She's blaming the men, even her husband. The men need to eat. I cleared it with Tom. He was fine eating at five. Healthy shame message. We agreed that we made an agreement. Of course, that's what he would tell you, she says condescendingly. I know Tom. I'm his mother. He wants to eat it too, just like my husband and every other man in your house. Ouch. You see this healthy shame coming back with toxic shame. What does Cindy say to this? She, there's no response to toxic shame. It's meant to silence you, to cancel you, to make you so devalued you have no fight left. And guess what? You give them their way. And they have no hard feelings at all about this. They have no remorse. You should thank me for saving your marriage, says her mother-in-law. Oh, you're putting your single friends before your husband. You're not going to have a husband soon. On and on. My, my son's getting thinner. He doesn't like your cooking. I mean, she is digging such a hole here, it's no wonder that she goes to her husband to try to get a little validation, some empathy, someone who's on her side. But her husband grew up with his mother. And he wants peace. He just wants a Thanksgiving. He just wants to sit down. He can smell the turkey. Everyone was just happy a few minutes ago. Can't you just settle down? Can't you just calm down? It's not that big of a deal. Three hours. But to Cindy, it is, it is a big deal. So this particular type of person, if you can understand that they have low empathy. I'm talking about the mother-in-law now. They want to get their way. They are going to insist that you come under their authority. In fact, they want to control you. This is all about control, isn't it? Can you see what's happening? They started to discuss it. She wants to be the boss of Thanksgiving. And this type of emotionally immature person whether it's a holiday, whether it's a wedding, you can almost guarantee there's going to be a scene. And in that scene, they are going to try to get the attention onto themselves. 
and we need to know how to handle that. Or possibly, at the, at the, at the very least, we know how to dismiss it, not take it personally, and bail out and help those who are victimized by this, who don't understand what's really going on. Cindy feels like it's her fault, that she's now made the men wait, she's not a good wife, she has all these things going on, she just wants some chocolate, which is a symbol, it's a sign she wants comfort. She needs someone to comfort her right now. Her husband has not validate, validated her. In fact, both her husband and his mother have invalidated her, which is also making her feel, nobody understands me. But thankfully, if someone could go up and validate her and empathize with her and realize that she has been a victim of this toxic shame, not healthy shame, there may be something that we could salvage here. 